Uh, first uh, item on the agenda is to review and vote on the meeting minutes for April 2nd, April 10th, and April 17th. Um, one of these was the joint meeting with the Water Commissioners, the Finance Committee, the Water Department. I don't know, there were probably a few other groups there as well. Um, one was our regular selectmen's meeting, and the other was? The really short. It was, oh, the really short one, just one to, really uh, short meetings, yeah. uh, to get so the warrants left. Right, yeah. Um, yeah, that one was so short, it hardly had minutes. Um, I would entertain a motion on the minutes. Okay, I make a motion to approve the, the minutes of uh, April 2nd, April 10th, and April 17th, 2019. I would second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, uh, next is the comments from the public on items not listed on the agenda. Really? Nothing? Okay. Um, we've got a public hearing that's technically not till 5.15. Do we have to... Um, 6.15. Sorry, 6.15. Um, uh, do we have to wait for that? I don't think. Are you ever source of Verizon? Neither. Neither? Neither. Oh, my God. You're a reporter. Nobody's here. No, no I'm, I'm here uh, with our source potentially. But, uh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Maybe we can get our executive session out of the way in the next 10 minutes. <laughs> or new business. Or new business. <laughs> There's nothing under new business. No, okay. We've got three appointments. Oh, um, wait. What town, oh, town administrator updates? Can we can do on, town. Man. Okay. Oh, no, that's, Let's get ahead to town administrator updates. Talk really slow because there's not a ton. Oh, there's not a ton. Well, okay, well, get your slow talking out. So, we have an invitation from Frontier Regional School for their graduation. Okay. Uh, class nights Wednesday, June 5th at 7 p.m. Graduation is Friday, June 7th at 7 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, there's a letter from a Keith Morris. Um, it's notification that Pan Am is going to be doing their annual spraying of the rail corridor with a bunch of chemicals. Mm -hmm. And then their notification of two licenses that were issued to grow hemp. One is for, um, one was issued to Scott Koski at 149 Christian Lane, and the other one was issued to Karen Gaston at 207 River Road, Wheatley. Mm -hmm. So, it's, um, anyone who wanted to grow up needs to get a license from. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's not something that we, you're, that's, they're, they're telling us this to be nice. They are telling us this to be nice. Yeah. And does that need anybody else's yeah. review or approval to the other no. board? It's, these are licenses issued by the Mass Department of Agricultural Resources. Mm -hmm. So it's, only it's, hemp. it's an agricultural product. Hemp is still an agricultural product. Yes. Okay. Um, so that's it for what's in the packet. Um, so the manganese filtration project is mm -hmm. ongoing. Um, and I think the anticipated completion time is probably one or two months. Mm -hmm. Not because you're going to be working straight out, but I think because they're fitting the project with other projects. Okay. Um, and again, that's the, the uh, installation of the uh, the green sand filters in the pump house. Um, so okay. it's been a long time coming, and yeah, you should. Uh, they were like mentioned to, last well, night at the marijuana fair. Potentially going to buy more filters for the town because of water usage. It's, it's a possibility um, if those folks, uh, the the people who are interested in in marijuana cultivation at uh, uh, I don't know what the address is. It's the corner of Christian Lane and State Road, the purple mm -hmm. greenhouses. Yeah, purple and greenhouses. Um, the, there's the, the potential that they that they might be looking to. Um, use water from the town in quantities greater than the number of filters that the town's going to install. Mm. Because the filtration systems have limitations yeah. based on the number of tanks. Um, so it, it's possible that the water department may ask them to pay for those upgrades 
to the system necessary for um, necessary for that project. Okay. Uh, so. so would they be located at the public facility now, or they be, or at the site where they're at? Yeah. Um, I think the idea was that they would be located at the pump house. Pump house, okay. Yeah. Um, presumably they could install their own filtration system as well. They needed to. Well, but it's probably for volume coming in, not volume they're using. Right. So you probably yeah. want it at the pump house. Then we think if it's our, if it's it's like our infrastructure, yeah, should it's gonna affect, affect yeah, everybody else, yeah. Yeah, so okay. that might have made sense to me. Okay, that's a bridge to cross when we come to it. Okay. Yeah, the elementary school generator is um, awaiting inspection from the electrical inspector. Mm -hmm. So the electrician's done and we're just waiting uh, for that. It's been load tested and it should be pretty much ready to go. And we will have uh, electricity at our emergency shelter. If, does anybody out there remember when we first started talking about the elementary school having a generator? I see one hand in the audience. Yeah. Is that the only emergency shelter we have, or is this building emergency shelter? I, I think that's our designated emergency shelter because it has a there's it more space. Right. It has a and a kitchen commercial facility. kitchen and more space for people to stay. Okay. So. Um. I keep talking for four minutes. Oh, Unless, or, uh, our fo or our or our. Well, we have had some people come in. I recognize, like my favorite ever source poll, the other person, this has arrived. <laughs> so I'm, it's different. They change every time. They do. They it. change, and you, you you know you find a good one, you want to hold on. Is what yeah. I say. You know. Yeah, I suggest you put them in the pole position. <laughs> in the pole position. Okay, sorry, sorry. It's Body petition, not position. Petition. Poll so. petition, no. yeah. All yeah. right, there we go. All right, so members of the public had their chance to comment earlier on. Um, so are we done with town administrator updates at this point? Yeah, I think we should move on. We should move on, okay. We have two public hearings. Technically, we'd be a little bit early. Um, one uh, that is being continued from last meeting uh, about a pole and wire locations on River Road. Um, but I, uh, the reason for uh, continuing it was we could not tell from the information they gave us where the poles were really going to be and what, like what parcel they were on and so on. So my understanding is much of that was rectified in the subsequent information they sent us and Brian sent us a bunch of pictures as well. So I'm going to pull up. See, I don't print them out at that moment. PDF here. Um, okay. So uh, that's the Verizon one. Uh, oh, I, I don't see. Um, I think we got anything updated. Oh, we don't have anything updated from. Well, that doesn't. Unless now. Just the pictures. Just the pictures. And the pictures were not sent to us from Eversource. They were sent to us from me. Brian. Okay. And you have the. Uh, I sent you the. Yeah. The Google Earth image of the Google Earth image. That's what I just pulled up here. With the measurements. Um, and then the picture of the. Uh, it's like three big. Uh, it's like transformers there, and these. My understanding from last time is that these are needed to temper the voltage coming from the solar panels that are near the intersection of Christian Lane and River Road. So that's where that stands. So are the folks from Eversource here to talk about that poll? Is that your poll? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we have, we're here. Um, my name is Melissa Hancock. I'm from Community Relations. Uh, sure, no problem. Yeah. All right, which one are we talking about first? We did two. We're going to get yeah. the, one from, uh, the one from Eversource. Yeah, Eversource was scheduled for uh, five. Yeah. Okay, that's Verizon. This other one is Verizon too. Uh, Verizon and Eversource. Well, they both say Verizon and Eversource. 
The one on we were talking Long Plain Road. River Road. Christian, River, River, River Road. Road. Yeah. Okay, River Road. River okay. Road. Because <laughs> you attach pictures with the with the other one with Long Plain. Okay. Okay. River Road. Uh, oh, there's no log. Yeah. You're gonna print out River Road. That's Long Plain Road. Um, I thought the River Road one from last time. There we go. I think I remember it last time. Uh, so that's the one, that's the one from last time. Yeah. And I don't have an update on that one. So. Um, so my name is Melissa Hancock. I'm the community relations representative for um, Eversource out in Western Mass. I know um, I've met with a couple of folks in here before, um, but we just wanted to come and um, kind of uh, I brought some Carla, who apparently is your favorite, uh, with, with me tonight and um, another Carla who's um, an engineer for our solar department um, to just explain the project and why it's needed and also kind of present um, an alternative. We did bring some maps with us um, so we can show you um, our new proposed um, or you know some options that we could present um, to uh, make this process a little easier. So I'll have Carla bring up the maps. So the first one, and I have some for the public too, is going to show you the original proposed location for the first petition. The second is going to show you the options for distance that we have. So if not at the first location, do you want me to? If not at the first location, um, then we have the rest of that road that's highlighted as an option to place the regulators. Does anybody want a copy of the map? Okay. So basically, it looks like on the, as for options, it has to be somewhere between Christian Lane and Straits Road uh, along River Road. Along that River seems Road. like a... Right. I, I keep hearing that statement, and I think we asked, and maybe in the minutes, why can't it be near the solar farm that's being developed off of Christian Lane? So that's why we brought Carla with us, so she can kind of explain, because she lives and breathes this every day, um, and she's the kind of the mastermind behind, is that a good word? The mastermind behind <laughs> um, a lot of the projects that go on in Western Mass. So she can kind of explain um, what the regulators do and why it has to be placed um, in in that spot. Okay, so if you if you look at this map here, the solar project is going to be more over this way, a lot over to, and actually, our map actually shows it. So if you look at this other map, this right here is Waitley Solar. No, no, the new. I'm talking the new one going in. Is yeah, that's the one. Well, mm -hmm. There's yeah. one there, but there's one yet to be built. That's a different project. So this locate this facility you're proposing here is for the one. Well, on middle of Christian Lane. Actually, so so these voltage regulators are for both of those projects. Yeah. But right now, Waitley Solar is in construction, so that's why we're calling it Waitley Solar. That's why mm -hmm. we're saying that. So what happens is. We as a company have to, um, I am not going to think of words here, but have to maintain a certain voltage level for our, our customers. Okay. So when all this generation comes onto these circuits, it starts to raise and lower the voltage. So these voltage regulators are going to help maintain the voltage with all this injection of solar. And the reason it has to be here along this road is because I have to maintain the voltage this way and going this way. So if we didn't put them here, we'd have to put a set of voltage regulators here and we'd have to put a set of voltage regulators here. So this was the best place to put these, to accommodate both branches of the circuit. It seems then that the voltage must be coming north on, north on River Road. Um, actually, the, the substation is kind of over here and it yeah, comes across the river, right? It goes river. up, right. So exactly. even though the solar is not placed south of, of on River Road, somehow the placement of the solar, like after the substation, you still need the, the voltage the regulators, voltage regulators to, earlier on. Right, to, to keep that voltage at a, at an acceptable level. 
So it's not so much regulating the solar generated voltage, that, it's, right. gen yeah, it's regulating the voltage coming across the river from Hadley. Correct, it, it's feeding the rest of our customers past this little branch here. Okay. Yeah. Now, this is gonna seem like a really stupid question. Okay. I didn't know there was another solar project going on over here. I'm usually, the, I'm usually the queen of the, the solar oh. yeah. pilots, but is this like not a one, this is not a pilot one, it's a private one. These no, are it's a pilot that's across from uh, it's Cole Cops. It's Cole Cops, I that's think. That's across from Berkshire Brewing or whatever. Oh, okay. In my backyard, if you I think want. This is Cole Cops. And then there's the one. Right. Long. Uh, yeah, but I don't remember the name. There's Long Plain. Is this one that like has been there for a while then? No, no it's, it's the one they just, just built with the three next, poles next to the person's next house. Next to Irene Farrick's house. Well. You know Irene so Farrick's. Did we, did we sign a pilot with them? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Oh, we did two at once. Yes. Yes, we did two at once. Okay. okay. It that's, was buy one, get one. one free. But yes. pay for both. But pay for both, right? So, so you're saying that that the substation, whatever you call it, there needs to be there to, to reduce power coming from across the river? No. So those voltage regulators that we would like to put on River Road are going is going to maintain the voltage for the customers on the rest of the circuit, going this way and going this way to keep them at the acceptable level that we're, you know, held to, basically. Okay, so, but right now there's not, why is it working the way it is now? Because these solar projects are not online yet. So why don't you put something near the solar project that would address that? Because it's got nothing to do with just that solar, it's the solar on the whole circuit. Well, there's so, only two solar facilities. I, I, I guess no, I'm, no, no, I'm no. confused. No, 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 Okay, so you have, um, Currently in Waitley, if you um, take into account the projects in progress right now and the completed projects, you have 22.3 megawatts of solar in your town. Um, so in order to make sure that everyone, you know, uh, Sally Smith down the street on River Road all the way down at the end of the street to make sure she doesn't go on to flip the lights on and her lights flicker because she has low voltage or her refrigerator stops working properly because she has low voltage, we have to put these regulators in that regulate um, the voltage throughout the circuit. Yeah. But that's because of the solar. But and, if, and if I'm saying it's because of the way. solar, why don't you address it at the solar farm and not on somebody else's property? Because it affects the entire circuit. It doesn't just affect the people immediately around the solar array. So we have to take into consideration not just the area in which the generation is coming back out to the grid, but everyone on that grid as a whole is going to be affected because ultimately you're generating back to the entire grid, not just the section that you're on. So what happens with the people that are between the solar farm and your uh, regulators here proposing? The regulators that are going in and then any others that we may have in place should be sufficient to maintain the voltage. So for right now, based on the studies that were made and the solar generation that are gonna go in online at some point in time and what we already have, this is what we're doing ahead of time to prevent anybody else on the circuit to have any issues. Right now there's enough equipment out there to maintain what's being generated back onto the grid and what's being um, consumed by the customers. But as we continue to add solar generation, we have to make these accommodations for everyone on the circuit. Right, the, the solar projects cannot be done at the, um, at the risk of uh, our other ratepayers and our other customers. Yeah. So in order to have this clean, reliable energy, which I think, is, um, I think we can all agree is great for Western Mass and really puts us on the map um, in a positive way, um, we have to um, make sure that all the voltage is continued for the rest of our customers who don't have solar. So right now, those two large projects are not online. Mm -hmm. But They're once they come yet. online, in order for them to actually um, be able to be interconnected, we need to install those voltage regulars so the voltage is good for everybody. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I still don't understand yeah. if they're but, being affected yeah. can by... I, can I ask a question that might help address that one? I'm actually an electrical engineer. I'm not a power systems electrical engineer. Uh -huh. My work is more in solid state devices and such. So. Um, Consider me educable. Okay. It seems like power is flowing north on uh, River Road. Yes. And then splitting up Christian Lane and then the northern part of River Road. Yes. But the power from the solar farms uh -huh. 
would be going on to the grid and who knows what direction it's going. Right. Um, how does the transformers, or sorry, I should say the voltage, the voltage regulators, um, kind of further south on River Road, do anything if the power is mainly flowing the other way? I mean, so, I, I, so don't think can, I, I don't know what the answer to that okay, is. Okay, so, so these voltage regulators, they are transformer, and yeah. they have what we call tap changers on them. Mm -hmm. So what they do is they monitor the voltage what's on the load mm -hmm. side of them mm -hmm. to see... Um, Which would be the north side. Right, yeah. how they need to adjust to keep the voltage level to those other two mm -hmm. branches. So, so they can see... Uh, I'll just voltage yeah. coming from where we'll be able to see voltage coming from those solar farms and if they're doing something that raises yes. or lowers the voltage on those lines sufficiently mm -hmm. that these transformers react and they've got basically power coming north that they can push one direction right. or the other as needed and or or keep it from going if there's enough solar then you don't need to bring so much across the river from half. So it's just well, it's, it's is that, is there, is it more complicated that. than that? It's, well, so we so from our substation at Autopotic Sub, mm -hmm. we have to send a certain level of voltage out, and depending on what the load does, mm -hmm. you know that the voltage gets affected because of the current. Yeah. So um, it's kind of it's me, it's kind of looking at what's behind it, mm -hmm. and it's seeing what the load is doing out here, and it's trying to keep that voltage level. Yeah because nothing's constant, you know, how yeah. things fluctuate all the time. But the point, so one of the things I actually did look up, on this circuit alone, there's like 8.3 megawatts of solar on the whole circuit. So it's not just these two solar farms that are mm -hmm. affecting, it's just now the combination, the addition of those two solar farms now mm -hmm. is what's causing the voltage to... Right. And the um, 8.3 is existing and then adding? 8.3 is in process and, oh. and completed, and it has to okay. do, and it's a, it includes all the small rooftops. Rooftops, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so, I don't know if you know, yeah. but you know, when, so when there's full um, sun, you have full output. Yeah. When there's cloud coverage, you know, you, you're, you don't have a nice smooth curve, you have mm -hmm. a jagged line of a high output, low output, you know, and it does that, and that's, kind of what we refer to as flicker, and that's mm -hmm. what will start to bother our customers also. So that's why we have to keep yeah. that voltage even. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, and um, just a clarifying question, when you quoted 22.3 megawatts. That's in Waitley. In Waitley, when yeah. that counts people's rooftops, yes. solar farms, any private arrays that are out there, that's all of those together. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, so I guess in that, Context. It makes sense to me that you can't take care of this necessarily at the solar farm. That having it here is more advantageous for controlling more of the lines. Mm -hmm. that, and that's, I guess, what I'm getting out of the geography here. Yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Why, why this section of River Road? When you're, where's your line come in? Further down here, though? Yeah, the line comes across the river somewhere down here, and then power travels up and I remember this from when we had that big outage years ago people got electricity on River Road first and I had calls from people in West Waitley how come the eastern half of Waitley gets power first but, but, that, but, that, but that's but, but that's where the, the generated power is coming from so you can uh, I mean a transform electrical devices can look down the transmission line and see what a load looks like. It's basically the phase between the voltage and current signals, um, and you can you may need to adjust that to keep the voltage constant. So it, it makes sense to me that if you're going to, if if one of your remedies is to regulate power coming up through here into these two lines, um, then it makes sense to me that it has to be here. Well, why couldn't it be further down? Here? It can, oh, they're saying it can be. It can, say it can be anywhere uh, uh, between r r roughly Straits Road okay, Straits. and Christian Lane, Sorry. but it should be along here. It doesn't have to be at this exact location. Right. Okay. So you're saying this will eliminate the flicker I get in my house mm -hmm. right now on Christian Lane? You're, I know you're getting flicker, yeah, but... Um, I do, maybe once a day. Well, I guess we'll find out. <laughs> I don't know well, that. <laughs> At any point in time experience any flickering, it's best to call in and report what we call a non-outage or non-trouble ticket. So customer service rep or the automated system 
can submit a ticket on your behalf and one of the emergency crews will go out to your house and check to see is it just your service, is it a problem with your transformer, is it a problem in the grid, are you the only customer, are there barriers? But you can just call the number on your telephone bill and put in a trouble, uh, trouble call. Of course, it's mostly at night when you have the lights on, so. Right. And you can call whenever it happens, call in. We have crews available on the clock. Okay, so what, what size are you looking for the, the regulators here? You never told us or gave us a picture. We could have one of uh, a location in Sutherland. That's what it's going right. to look like. Yeah. What, what, what yeah. size? Could you give us some dimensions of what these regulators are? It's, I mean, we've got a picture, but we can guess it. Whether it's 6, 8, 10, 15 feet high. What, what well, is the, so we're going to put I know, we've got the pictures. Right, so the, the regulators are eight feet tall. The two poles on either side are 50 feet tall, um, and the poles are 18 feet apart. So each regulator is eight foot high, and then diameter, what, two feet? About, I'd, I'd have to get you the exact dimensions, but okay. they are eight feet tall. I'm, I'm, I'm guessing the dimension, the uh, circumference of the, of the regulator should be more than maybe four feet. So will they be look? Will they look pretty much like this picture we have from Sutton? Right, that is the recent uh, standard, the most recent standards that we have for construction. Okay. Now I also noticed you have regulators on poles throughout town, much smaller than this. Those are transformers. Oh, transformers. Well, no, no, hang on a second. Uh, we do have, um, but they're smaller. They're smaller voltage regulators, and they do kind of different jobs. They're kind of like on um, this. Where we need these is in our backbone, which is also a loop scheme. That's why they need to be bigger, handle, um, put out more um, current, and um, uh, they need to be heavier duty to handle the load that's going through them, basically. That's why they have to be on a platform. Those other smaller ones, there's one per pole, they're kind of like on side taps that, um, that aren't in a loop scheme that need to handle all that um, power. Okay. You know, how high off the ground are these going to be? It's about about 13, 14 feet at the base of the platform. Is there a, is there a, a safety requirement? They have to be so many feet higher than the ground? Right. Above the ground? Right. It has to be at a certain height uh, from the ground. Well. I mean, they, 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 they look um, as beautiful as lots of infrastructure um, looks. Um, is there anyone here who, among the abutters who were notified, um, who had anything to say about these poles going in? The uh, abutters were notified. They know about it. And is is that location marked out in the field? The, the pole location? Oh, yeah. I'm not sure I if it's... Like, it should be staked out yeah. by... Cause I, I believe Verizon originally marked it. Um, um, if you we can, I mean, we not, can mark it. I'll check tomorrow morning. We would be happy to do a site visit with you as well, if that is something that you'll need. No, it's, it's not marked as a... Noontime today, unless it's paint on the ground or something. But sometimes they do get pulled out. Sometimes what? They get pulled out by uh, people in the area. Like that's happened to me before. So if you want, like I said, I can come back tomorrow morning. I'll stake it out. If it isn't, and send you guys a picture um, to show you where it's located, or we can meet on site at some point this week. Okay. Uh, really? Thing I, I, I guess. Uh, one thing that concerns us is is the, the view. You, you've got a nice, clear, open near farmland. The one in the one in uh, Sunderland is kind of it's got trees and landscaping in, in, in the background. Here you're putting these out in the middle of uh, the field, basically, with people houses uh, located uh, on the opposite, well, same side as the poles. Right, the, that's the reason we came back with the, after doing the studies, um, with the distance that we have to play with as far as where to place these regulators. So we do have the street that's highlighted on the second map, that portion, 
um, as an option to place the regulator platform. Um, but unfortunately, due to where the fee comes in from the substation and the customers that are going to be affected, based on the studies, that is the area that is best suited to help maintain voltage for your customers once the solar fields are interconnected. So, you know, as, as we mentioned, if you want to set up a site visit, we can meet out and, you know, walk that particular portion that's highlighted and decide on a location that um, would, you know, please the town better. Well, I think the east side of the road or the west side? Of the road? West, 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 side. Side. west side. I'm west sorry. West side with the houses. Yeah. But, you know. I believe the whole line is on the left side. What, what is your option if, if, if we do not approve this location? Um, that would be um, unfortunate because, I mean, the whole point of this is to encourage people to do solar within western Massachusetts is, um, you know, putting these projects together and helping um, helping get solar interconnected is something that we are very passionate about at Eversource, so it would be very unfortunate. And I mean, the if you want solar in your town, unfortunately, these regulators have to go up um, in some places. And we're doing our best to accommodate, you know, making sure it's not right in front of someone's house um, and, you know, doing our best to work with you. Yeah. Well, like in the absence of the abutters showing up to say that they have any problem with it. That's, I mean, the last time we had this, we had three abutters here. You know, um, I, would, I would not say yelling and screaming, but they were uh, appropriately letting us know what they thought. For this location? No, no, no for, for like, the last time we had a full yeah. hearing. So oh, I'm very sensitive to the, the, you know, the people on the ground if they really care about whether this goes in or not, whether this kind of thing goes in or not. And I was really happy that you all were able to resolve that with uh, something that, you know, met with their, met their needs right. as well as met your needs. Um, I know we don't have that situation here, um, um, right? We have something well, that will be... No, I, I, I... Yeah, as lovely as any transformer station would be. But the folks who would have to look at it are not here. Right. Uh, I, I guess that I mean, concerns me of the, uh, of the process. This is, what, the second time we're, we're discussing this, and, and if we don't act today, another time. Uh, you, you, I guess, for one, I'd like to see a list of the abutters you contacted. And it's that. maybe the day you contacted them. We have that. You have that? Mm -hmm. Well, we they give us the cards and we mail them out. Okay, well, the town does that. Okay, we you mail that out. Okay. <coughs> and, and the second thing, I, I guess, like to see some, uh, you give addresses and, and even uh, parcel numbers on, on a map, but you don't show any locations of houses on here. Uh, and even at the way you measure distances, 863 feet from what? Christian Lane? Christian Lane is 50 feet wide. Where are you measuring it from? I mean, I, I guess you need to be more specific. Where are you measuring? And I like to, again, see house locations on here. It's, it's on, uh, we have an assessor's map that shows all of that. It's public information. You can look at that and see and locate the houses. I think you've got to be more receptive, more more descriptive of, of the impact of what you're doing, not just a straight line with poll locations. I mean, going forward, I can make sure that whoever submits a petition takes, uh, prints the map off of your GIS website and marks that along with the regular petition that's submitted so that you have that as reference. That would be really helpful. Yeah, that would that be helpful. Such a step ahead of, you know, it's, <laughs> Like I said, you're my favorite person for poll hearings because you've been the most responsive, especially to people, you know, and on the ground are going to have to look at it. So I really, I, I really want to say I do appreciate that. But um, most often, Eversource sends a consultant to bring something in and they say, they, all they say is what's written on the piece of paper. They yeah. So they won't tell us anything else. So um, these maps, for example, if these maps had come with originally, that would have probably done a lot because here they do show houses, although it doesn't say lot numbers on there. The assessor's map would have that uh, extra level of detail. Maybe so. Yeah. 
So I, I guess take that message back to your yes. Eversource people that develop all these proposals that they like to see that on here. Okay. Oh, well, we're... Um, so what are we deciding we want to look at in the field again? Or? Um, I think Keith has looked at it in the field and said he's yes, he good with the location. That makes me think it is actually staked out or he wouldn't be able to make that assessment. And is, um, is, is this a fix? I mean, if, if we go look at it and decide, well, maybe you ought to go on the other side of one of these existing poles, is that an option? Right. If in the event you go and take a look at it um, where Keith approved it previously and you feel like you want to move it anywhere where it's highlighted on the map, um, you guys can contact me. You have my email. We'll set up a site visit with the appropriate parties and then we'll agree on a location. Um, hopefully, we can kind of postpone the petition if that's the case. Because um, otherwise, we'd have to resubmit the paperwork and it starts the clock. And this holds up the interconnections for customers that are waiting on the regulators to go in. Um, but if you guys are willing to contact me, you know, I'll, I'll work with you. So and what, I think the abutters are going to be right Yeah, that. right, exactly. Yeah. Well, what, yeah. what are your, your limits for location? Is it between these two poles you have marked? That's here? the original location I was marked between those two. Um, right. But the second map highlights where on river um, we can place the regulators and have them function with no issues. So between Christian Lane and Straits Road, right. on, on the satellite satellite map. Yeah. This, this, this green highlight right. here. Okay, so, so, so it's anywhere in that road you could place it? Right. Anywhere that's highlighted across. Right, yeah. But the location that they've asked for is one where abutters have been notified, they missed two hearings on it, Keith yeah. has checked it out, yes. is uh, fine with it. Um, so, I don't know if the issues would be different in a different place. It does look like there are more houses down this end mm -hmm. um, and fewer houses up here. Uh, there, um, there is, but not only the, the existing houses, I, I mean, that's, I just could say now it's prime farmland that could be developed residential. We'd hate to put two poles right in front of a farmland today that the, the owner can't sell it now because you've got this regulator in front of it. That's another concern. Well, even the, though there's well, nobody the there, but they are notified. Even the though there's nobody notified. there today, I mean, mm -hmm. you're you're affecting future use of that property, future okay. development, future We're also value of that property. Increased reliable clean energy for Western Mass. Wow. Right. So, so the more interconnection goes in the if, in order to encourage uh, the public to want to interconnect, in other words, invest in solar panels, whether it's a solar array or house, um, in order for this to continue working, we have to make sure that our grid can handle what's coming back out. We want to encourage customers to interconnect. We think it's a wonderful benefit. It's great not only for your town, but it's also great for the state of Massachusetts. But with those changes that are affecting the grid, we have to make the proper accommodations. So the regulator platform is a necessary uh, evil, if you will. It, it doesn't look um, as pleasing as some of the equipment that may be out there currently but it is necessary to maintain not only the voltage of the customers that do not have solar, but also to make sure that people can continue interconnecting and not cause any issues to the grid. So it is necessary. Um, in picking a location, we will absolutely try and take into consideration the placement of the equipment that's there, the houses in the vicinity, so farmland, as opposed to placing this in front of a house, presently with what's there, it's gonna seem like the better option. So in notifying the owners of the property, the abutters, they do have the right to say, we don't want this here. But if they haven't complained and there are no other issues presently and we want customers to keep interconnecting, we kind of have to proceed with equipment upgrades to the grid to be able to allow that in the future and presently for the people that are waiting for this upgrade to be able to interconnect. And the abutters you notified, were they aware of what this would look like? Or they yep. just got the map with new poll locations? I believe what goes out to the abutters is the notification of the hearing, and then that's, that's listed on your website and whatever else the town sends. Okay. So they have to take the step of coming to right. see the maps, basically. That's the, uh, what's on the back side of the postcard in the first page, so it's on the front side of the postcard. Okay, but there was no description to them of what this would look like. No, they're no. That's what they're. they're, well, they're not, not, right. The, the intent is to uh, notify them that there is a hearing for equipment that's going to go out on town taken, and you know they they have to take it from there. Okay. We should wind this up. I know most. It, it, to me, it, it's kind of deceiving because we get poll hearings all the time without knowing exactly what equipment is going out there. 
this is not a regular just one poll you're putting out here. Yeah. It's a regulator station that has more visual impact than just one poll out there. I guess so. Um, I, I guess think we're ready for a motion of some sort. I I like to see the location marked out there and it, take a look as to what else may be more appropriate on, well, on, on River Road. Okay. The location is marked. Between two it, poles, it's all the... the it's <laughs> marked well enough that our highway superintendent could go out there and determine that this location was going to be fine as far as our road infrastructure and other infrastructure that's out there. Okay, but as far as... Okay, it's, so, so it's marked. Abutters have been notifying. They chose not to look into it any further. I think they've made the case that this is necessary infrastructure for today's grid to keep everybody's electricity stable and to be able to accommodate solar, which we have absolutely supported in the past. I would like to move that we approve the poll locations and thank you for the nice extra maps that really lay it out here and I know that you're hearing our feedback and that next time it will be Yes. We'll be able to see the parcels and so on. Um, I think we should not delay this any further. If we had a room full of people screaming, I don't want this in my front yard, that might be a different situation, but we don't. I don't think we properly told people what was going there. I don't see in that announcement, and like I say, a poll hearing is usually one poll. It's all you told people. I don't think they're aware that there's a substation or whatever you call it, regulators going in like this. And how critical, when, when do you actually need to have this installed? I mean, you have to wait for the solar farms to be put in, the two solar, or the two solar to go online? Solar cannot go online until these upgrades have been made to the grid. So any customer waiting for them to interconnect for this portion of the grid has to wait until the upgrades are made. This is for permission to elect to erect a line of poles. Install underground conduits and cables on the following streets. Along which designated route of line, you are an owner of real estate as determined by the last assessment of taxation. For more information on this petition, please call. And that's what it says. A line of poles. It doesn't say regulators on poles or anything. So I guess I would like to see the location in the field marked. Marked location in the field. Are you willing to go out there? Because it's marked right now. No, it isn't. It's between two poles. Well, you, I, I would suggest maybe Keith can go with you, if you can meet with him on site just to take a look at it, and then touch base with me if anything has to change. Considering Keith did approve it and look at it, he was presently there, I think that's your mouth back. Rest with his board. He provides input. But. Okay. Well, so I, I guess it sounds, I, it sounds like like if we were put to a vote, we would have a vote of one in favor and one against. Right now, yes. So in that case, we would need to continue the poll hearing. Good one. Um, and then it's on you, Fred, to go out there and take a look at that and see the location, see that it's marked, and come back with... No, I'm not going to mark it. It's somebody else has no, to mark see it. see that it is marked. Well, okay. It is marked because I believe our highway superintendent. That's what I'm basing it on. Okay? Okay, well, I'm telling you that today there was nothing marked out there. Unless it's paint on the ground. Okay. So um, then, I mean, move that we continue the poll hearing. So can we have a quick side discussion? Sure. While our next meeting. Oh, okay. In the time of that, because <laughs> yes. I, I think this is going to come into play. Okay. okay. We'll grab my calendar here. In my understanding, our next meeting that is not a town meeting is probably on May 7th. Right. So the question is, I maybe sent out the doodle poll for availabilities because Jonathan's not available the 8th. Um, yeah. Can everybody do uh, 
May 7th, Tuesday, May 7th at 4 o'clock. I can. Okay. Does that work? 4 o'clock, okay. 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 Thank you. Then um, I would uh, propose we uh, continue the poll hearing to May 7th at 4 o'clock, 4 10. So that would be a regular. Let's select, say four o'clock. A regular select board meeting on that day. Yeah. Would be eight seven eight will be eight. eight. Yeah, seven. seven eight. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, so it's moved to continue the poll hearing. Should vote on that. Uh, I haven't got a second yet. To continue the hearing. Okay. Yes. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Done. Okay. To be thank continued. You. Thank, thank you so much thank for coming. You. And thank you for the. You're welcome. Nice I'm going to sure to pass the word along regarding the GIS map. I know. All right. Okay, we are we are on a roll here. So there's might be a single poll. There's might be a single poll. Okay. Let's hope so. Um, let me pull up the agenda again. Okay. So our next. Uh, it's a poll hearing for Verizon uh, for a poll and wire location on Long Plain Road. So I'm it here. I'm going to pull up the uh, stuff that you emailed to us in advance. Do you have that? You, you have the map for this one, Fred? Uh, yeah, on Long Plain Road, you're talking about. Long Plain, yeah. So, um, yeah, hi, come on up and uh, to the front row. My name is Jacob Rockman. I'm here representing Verizon tonight. I'm a contractor for UC Cinegenic. Um, basically, it's going to be a joint owned poll between Verizon and Eversource Electric, and the reason why this poll needs to be placed on Long Plain Road, across from 103 Long Plain Road, is for. Um, uh, electrical upgrades, and I believe it's a transformer bank that's going to be put in there. Okay, is this similar to the one we've been looking at? Where's the look? Is it the same yeah. picture? No, I don't know. I, that's my understanding that it's going to be something similar to that. I don't know if it's going to be some, quite that size, but it, it's going to be a transformer bank. A new pole is being placed 18 feet away from an existing pole. There's going to be a platform spanning the two poles with some transformers. Okay. So this one is definitely like a line of poles. It's got two poles. This is a single pole, yeah, though. This, sure this is a single pole going 18 foot feet yeah. away from an existing in line with the existing pole line. Okay. Yeah. So on um, this map, uh, what I see is the kind of the dark spinny wheel is the new pole. Correct. Uh, and then upstream and downstream, there are some poles that are just labeled with the circle X. The existing pole uh, T36 and T37. Right. And these say things like 100, 197 feet and 180 feet. In, I thought I heard you just say 18 feet. It is. Um, yeah, sorry. I thought I pulled up the revised one. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So this one is just in the wrong place on this map. So how do you come up with these maps? So, um, these maps are drawn from a field survey where we take the center line measurements from the center line to the closest intersection, the center line from the road that we're actually on. Um, we do pull up the, um, the parcels from the GIS website, oh, okay. um, and that's where we get that information from for the abutters. Okay. Okay. This, this plan is not detailing where the houses are located. However, you know we do show where the parcels are. Um, I did visit this site earlier today, and I know that this new pole is basically going to be placed directly across the street from 103 Long Plain Road. Okay. So have the abutters been notified? Yes, they have. Are there any uh, abutters here from River Road? Or sorry, from Long Plain Road? Who would like to say anything about it? Uh, uh, again, it's, it's a pole location, not a regulator's. <laughs> Well, no, he's saying it's... Well, I, I know what you're saying, what you're trying to do, but the abutters were notified there was a pole location, new pole being put up, right. not a regulators. Probably not, no. 
right? And I think there there is a there's a difference. I guess I would like to I would like to see this location. Is is this staked? Is it marked it is out staked. there? Yep. And is is there is there trees on this side of the road? Where did the trees start? So basically on the side of the road where the pole is going to be placed um, on the east side of Long Plain Road yeah. there is um, a tree line there but th it's not going to be affecting the pole line there'll be no tree trimming or anything like that required um, it's set further enough back off the road so there are trees on, on these will be in front of uh, in front of a little wooded area and then further down in front of T37 that's an open field But where, where the new pole and the existing T36 are, there's trees directly behind that. Okay, but it's all clear land on the other side of the road, it's all open. On the other side of the road, there is um, a pretty large front yard with some trees in it leading back to 103. So this um, <coughs> 23, 39, 39. It's like Moroski's house yeah. probably. So the, the parcel 39 on the assessor's map doesn't actually show a building. Well, not that one. No, right. that's, uh, so this, this lot here yeah. doesn't have one. But this lot right next to it does. The 39 yeah, I'm saying this, this one here is going to see directly. Yeah. Is that where, right yeah. there's the house. Yeah. Roski's house. This used to tell you the, the, the street number as well. I don't know why it's not. Like it bit. shows it real quickly. Oh. So that's 103. There we go. 103. Yeah. And you're saying that's the, that's Roski's house. Yeah. Okay. So your ob objection, if I understand it, is you're telling people it's a pole, yeah, it's a pole. but yeah. we're putting up a, something much more substantial than just a pole that has wires like right. that. Right. That putting up a pole with lots of infrastructure yeah. that people need yeah. to know that in the notification. Right. Well, what if that was proposed in front of your property? Would you have a, a concern? How would you like that? I wouldn't if it was in my front of my property. The pole and then instead of putting up three regulators? Well, True, but would you respond to the postcard that says well, they're putting something up in your yard? It, 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 they're, they're describing a pole. They're not describing regulators. I guess we could let them put a pole up there, yeah. but no regulators. Yeah. yeah. So here, uh, to erect a line of poles with wires and fixtures abutting upon property owned by you is the. Um, the exact phrase up there. That still doesn't tell me. Fixture is a street light's a fixture. Is that what you're going to put up there? No. Well, you're putting something more. Yeah. So I guess the fundamental question is: Do is it who is it on to tell people exactly what's going to be on the pole? Right. Do we say that now these postcards? I don't necessarily think it's a bad idea that the postcards contain more detail. Um, about uh, about what is going in. Um, one oh, one of them says conduit and manholes as well. Um, I mean, do we do we ask now for when people want to put in a poll, they be a little bit more descriptive of what is going in? Um, I, I would say yes, or even show a picture if they want what it looks like. So again, I'm, what, it's very deceiving what they're telling people right now. The petition that the board receives is similarly, similarly generic in terms of it. Yeah. Request permission to locate poles, wire, cables, and fixtures. Yeah. So yeah, so I couldn't tell from the stuff that you sent in that it was something like this being proposed. So I guess overall, over my six, seven, going on eight years of being on select board and having full hearings. There just seems to be no feeling that we, like, uh, 
but I'll put it as us versus them. But Verizon and, Com and Comcast and Eversource, they don't feel like they need to tell us anything. They feel like we send somebody here with some sort of paper, with some sort of measurement on it, minimal information possible, and we're supposed to rubber stamp it. And that's, that, that's the feeling I get time and time and time again. And we're now getting at least a little bit of traction with Eversource on sending someone who can actually answer questions rather than sending someone who can't answer any questions. Um, and I don't know what is in our power to change about that. Is it in our power to, to dictate what's got to go on those notification cards? Can we, I mean, I know we can ask for anything, but can we require uh, I mean, we're the one, we have to think about it. Um, mm. I think they, I mean, they provide like post, postcard size things, right? That they provide. They, so they prepare those postcards and then just fill in the back of the meeting date and time and place. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's kind of what it looked like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we, presumably, we could, presumably we could add, maybe present it out. We could include more information in the mailing if we were to stuff in an envelope or something, but. Mm -hmm. That would require us knowing exactly what's being proposed, which would require more detail in the petition. And who gets to decide what has to go on the petition? Well, I think the board, as the approving authority, could mm. ask for what information it okay. uh, feels necessary to get you to sign the order. Okay. Is it of this one? Yeah. What, what is the, the limit for the abutters? About 300 feet, 500, what is it? Going direct abutters, how is it? Um, I believe it's, it's just on by the direct abutters, adjacent diagonally abutters. adjacent. Yeah. Carlo. But no, our other notifications for abutters and other hearings have a distance? The Zoning Act has different requirements. Zoning Act has different requirements. Yeah. Okay, I, I, I guess I would, I would think, you know, if we want to send the about us more information, that it should be the uh, proposer submitting information for, for us, I guess, if we want to mail it to the about us, to know that they should be doing that rather than Rather than the town trying to figure out exactly what it is. Yeah. So it should be, so what you're saying is, it should be kind of on the person submitting yeah, the petition. Yeah. Right. To submit a little more information other than the location. Right. Because here, certainly the amended one, describes the location really well. But, um, says proposed placement of one new pole on Long Plain yeah. Road, if it's really gonna be something that looks more like this, right. that might technically be correct, one new pole on Long Plain Road, but it's not very. Yeah, and that's what the verbal description, one placing one pole. Well, yeah, I have no objection to one pole, but if this was in front of my house, I sure would. So, okay. I, I, I guess before we, <coughs> Proceed on this one on Long Plain. Maybe we should tell people to notify the others again with with a description of description and even a picture from their resource of what you propose to do there. This is our first meeting with this location, so I, I think it may be appropriate to do that. The other one we've talked several times, but for this one. And I guess even future ones. I mean, this is two already. We don't. We got solar farms and other roads in town. Yeah, and, and it's gonna. I mean, when it, yeah. we're a good place for solar. Right. Yeah. So, do you know of any additional installations like this being planned? Um, not right now in Waitley, but I know they are happening throughout Western Mass right now. <clears throat> 
I know we have recently changed our, um, our process due to other conflicts um, that we are notifying the highway department every time we do survey, we send them our petition plans first um, right, to try to eliminate any type of issues. And has Keith looked at this one? Well, he, ha uh, he has, but uh, I'm, I'm curious as to, we went from 180 feet, which was probably in error, to 18 feet yeah. this afternoon. Um, do you know if the it is if the stake at 18 feet and that's been staked that out? should be yeah that that was there from the original the petition plan who drew up the person who drew up the petition plan made a mistake and that footage was missed originally and then when I got it <clears throat> to attend this hearing I um I, I reviewed it and was kind of quality controlling it and I noticed that the discrepancy was so I tried to get the revised plan over to you guys as soon as possible. Yeah, because when you see the old one, it looks like they're just putting a mid-span pole and right. nothing else. Yeah, right, and then right. when you see the 18 feet, then it makes you think that there might be one of those attractive installations going in. There is currently a transformer on the existing pole 36. Mm -hmm. um, so now I, I'm, I'm imagining, I, I don't know exactly what the electric company is going to do, but there's probably going to be multiple between the platforms. I don't know if it's going to be quite that large. That seems pretty big. And I know they do have them around here in Sunderland and Deerfield. Um, and they are kind of large. But I, I, I don't think this one is going to be the same size. But I can't answer for sure. I was actually kind of had some time leave. I was like, oh. Yeah, I figured they might be able to answer questions. Yeah. Mm, Kyla, That's why I don't understand when these are joint petitions. Kyla, why Kyla. they're not required to be here. but Especially when it's going to be. Presumably that's not Verizon equipment. That's no, it's not. <laughs> like the only reason we're involved is because it's our set area and we have cables going by it and we need to attach to the pole. We're not, no. we don't need this pole, <laughs> unfortunately. Well, uh, can we continue with the, I mean, the idea that the abutters are going to be better informed about what's going in? Is that something that we're allowed to do? I think we could we could send we could inc I mean, we'll have to we'll have to think it out but yes I think in situations where we're gonna have something like this yeah. as opposed to a, a single pole that's we just anticipate it's gonna hold wires or maybe a transformer at the top. Mm -hmm. The notice may not be. Yeah. So if, if this is going to May 4th, if that's May 7th. Way, May 7th, sorry. Then I don't want to do any extra meetings. May 4th is a Saturday. Yeah. <laughs> um, we have sure. our friends from Eversource back here. And we could make them stay. And we could make them, we'll put them first. Yeah, well, they are on 559. Four. Four. Four, three, 359. 359. But do we have but time? Well, I mean, so so here, so what is going to make that meeting different from this one is what? And they sort of feel it really kind of applies to the other poll as well. Um, are we going to re-notify the abutters about that this is a substantial installation? Right. That is, so that, that's my question. And it's locations you said. Right. The, wow. the, that it's a, that it's something more like this yeah. and not just oh oh it's a pole. Yeah. I, I guess I would feel better doing that way because then right. one of them can't say, Well you didn't send us a true picture either. So. Okay. So who and and who is gonna be responsible to do that? It might be. I think for this time it's probably best if probably us. if we do it. Um but moving forward, we should have discussions with both yeah. Verizon, who is probably caught in the middle here, um, and in Eversource. And have them say, okay. but we, we, we would you know, like something like a photograph of what right. it should look like. So what do we want to send? Let's we'll, say we'll, we'll take this butters list and we'll send out a mailing. What will, what will the mailing include? Um, if it's a postcard, it can't include a lot of text, but perhaps it could include, include it. a web link to a photograph of a similar installation. Like, you know, is this something that we can, uh, you know, post at our website and 
for a, descri a description. And I'm wondering of what, if that's uh, accurate. Or a description. A description of what that is. I do, and, I do kind of fear that that may not be a true depiction of what's going here on Long yeah. Plain. Right. Yeah. So, so how would we get? So how would we, so get, how would we get the information about what? The thing going in I, can, I can coordinate with the other source engineer responsible for this project as well and see what we can put together to okay. make it readily available to the public. Okay. And I, I can contact you, um, you okay. know, with that information. Yeah. If, you, right. if you could get a, I think photographs probably best. Yeah. And a description. And you could email that to, email that to me. Sure. Photograph and description. Yeah. Do we, do we have time by the next meeting, Brian, to do that, to notify, or do you want to do it with two? How quick they can get us that. Okay. And what do we need, a week notification to people for hearings? Is there a time? Um, technically, this is a continuation of the hearings. If you continue the hearing. Um, but we would send it out as, as, as soon as possible. Okay. And we have the addresses here. Okay. So let's be optimistic. And let's continue this to May 7th. Okay. If something happens that everything gets delayed, we can on May 7th, we can continue again. All right, okay. Okay. All right, so May I 7th at 4 p.m. moved that we, uh, well, I think technically we had them at 4 p.m. So should we say 4 okay. okay. And uh, we'll have uh, guards at the door okay. to make sure that they don't leave. Them. Uh, or maybe Evan will send someone for you too. I will definitely try to get this resolved and that information to you guys by the end of the week. Great, appreciate that. Right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Okay. Another poll hearing coming up here? I hope not. Not yet. Okay. All right. We just, we just got, I mean, we're good at poll hearings at this point. <laughs> we we're good at holding them. We're not good at getting information. Sure. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Okay, we have one more um, appointment, and so we're running behind. Sorry to keep you waiting. We've got Karen, mm -hmm. and, uh, folks from Diamond Shine. Yes. So come on up to the front. And um, so this is about our post community agreement. I think you got a copy from Brian. Yes, I did. Okay, good. Good. So we. Um, wrote in the host community agreement on um, more information regarding the parking okay. and we made a proposal for a phase two if in you know we get so many customers that we need to move into like a phase two parking as well as we address the security needs uh -huh. um, either using a police officer or if one was not available having a private security to man the road situation okay. to ensure no one got hit by a car I know that was the issue yeah, from we'll last see. time so um, I want to make sure you guys get a copy of all this. All of this information that's written here has also been put inside of the host community agreement itself. And the updated uh, sketch for phase one and phase two parking has also been updated. And I'll give you guys a copy as well. It's kind of small, obviously we need it larger for <coughs> oh, yeah. the actual map yeah. is very small. Some of the writing over to the left you can't really read, but it is reflected inside of the larger paperwork as well as the new host community agreement. And I wanted to give you guys a copy as well. Sure. Just a, a proposal for the phase two as well. Can I ask you a preliminary question? Sure. What's the entity that's yeah. going to be... What's the entity that's going to be getting the host community agreement and the uh, the license? Diamond Shine. And is that is that and that's incorporated somewhere? Yep, on uh, one seventy North Road, East Windsor, Connecticut. That's my mailing address, and it's incorporated here as Shine Diamond in the state of Massachusetts. In our um, Shine. Two, Shine Diamond. Yeah, because Diamond Shine. We have an FEIN number, but for the state of Massachusetts, Diamond Shine was already taken. Shine so you can get everything for like the FEIN when you do it federally, but not for state sometimes. So that's an L LLC. Yes, sir. It's a Massachusetts corporation. Yes, it's uh, registered in Massachusetts and Connecticut, and, and obviously federally.
So um, I have a question about what you just handed us um, for uh, sections seven and eight in the post community agreement. Um, who is the author of, uh, of all of this? Uh, myself and my team. So the civil okay. engineer who worked on it, two civil engineers worked on this as well as my architect, okay. who will be presenting at the uh, Zoning Board of Appeals as well. Okay, so um, a parking study would have been done then by someone on your team. That's correct. That would be like your civil engineer my officer. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so the information under parking requirements per estimated usage is from your civil engineer? Yes. Okay. Two of them. And what, what is their basis for this estimate? The fifteen hundred customers per month. That's what we're estimating as customer base on a monthly basis for the small kind of location that we have, based on the business plan and all of the statistics. So that's based on. Uh, we're not one of the larger um, outlets like Anita or the one that's going in um, in the corner shops in the mill. The sugar loaf or the. Uh, yeah, I believe so. Um, I drive, I mean, you drive by there to come here if you're going to the highway. Yeah. It gets right there on the right. Yeah, yeah. But what, what is your architect's or engineer's basis for this is what? 49 daily customers. Yeah, we're, yeah, the, we're, the, we're the yeah you on. have to you have to pull it from the other local from the businesses in Massachusetts and around that do like business so cannabis like business you have to pull the information from the business plan and create an estimate of how many you think that we're going to be we're going to have so that's where they get this information from oh. yeah I guess it, I, I wonder what assumptions have gone in to that estimate, you know. I mean, knowing what, having driven through the traffic in Northampton. Mm -hmm. Correct. Um, you're, you're clearly not estimating the same amount of. No ma'am. Of traffic, so like what are the assumptions that go into that, quant you know, quantitatively, how do you extrapolate from their traffic to your traffic? Right, well they're a much larger um, enterprise that has like more strains that they're going to have available just like the other location you guys have approved in Waitley. So we would be a much smaller location in terms of how many strains we would be offering. We would be only offering like things of ours as soon as we get our Deerfield facility up and running. So it's just you're, we're doing our best based on the estimates of other like cannabis industry knowing that we don't you know provide as much as a facility like that and things are getting a little bit more um, slowed down because more and more are opening up across the state of Massachusetts. It, I mean, NIDA is a difficult one to model after given the fact that they were the only one open along with another one towards the Boston area. So now that more are starting to open, I think one opened in Greenfield as well. As more business opens, the, the newness factor and all the other things you know, won't be as big also taken into consideration that Massachusetts is one of the only legal states here on the East Coast for recreation. So you're gonna get people from other states as well. But as we continue to open more, things will get slower. Okay. Um, would you, what, what are your thoughts on having um, an independent engineer do a traffic study or a parking study for to get a, another set of I mean estimates we, is that yeah I mean you could work towards that the thing is is that you're still giving you're still giving estimates I mean oh, it's I still I it's still coming back to yeah. the same I make, response. Estimates. I make yeah. estimates all day though and yeah yeah I mean you're still coming back estimates. yeah to the but, same thing because you're not yeah. sure till you really open and uh, we're not asking for sure. Yeah. We're, we're wondering about estimates, and these estimates are made by people who have an interest in the business working. We can't really work unless we can settle the parking and traffic issues. Mm -hmm. 
Now, I think I'm not a parking and traffic expert. Right, me either. I think people on the planning board, though, might value an independent, having an independent study done mm -hmm. that might actually help your case because everyone is going to ask where do these numbers come from and depending on their position they might say well it's um, you know that's ridiculously high or that's ridiculously low people are going to be parking all over the street and it I mean it will not be welcome at the vegetable stand across the street I know I go to the vegetable stand all, all the time mm -hmm. and if I sometimes even now I can't get in there because their vegetables are so freaking good <laughs> right <laughs> That's a good no. thing. <laughs> which, is a, which is a good thing. Right. Um, so, and, and, uh, and, and that's a, an awful place to be crossing the road. Mm -hmm. So, so to, to me, that, that is a big area of concern that the, the I mean, the numbers we have here, I, I understand that they're estimates, and I understand that they're made by someone on your team who is a professional. Mm -hmm. um, but I would, I would certainly support the uh, as you go through the special permit process and as you go through the um, uh, site plan review. Yes. That an independent parking study uh, be done and with a little bit more information about why the estimates are what they are mm -hmm. and how well, you know, kind of assumptions go into right. those estimates is really something that I think I would value. I imagine John and Fred would value yeah. them too. Yes, uh, yeah, I, I agree. I, I have experience in traffic engineering monitoring for years. The yeah, I'm real curious where you get the 1.5 uh, past customers in a car. That's that seems awful high. 15 vehicles during peak hour. Peak hour is typically 10 percent your total, so you're going to get 150 vehicles uh, per day. 150 versus 49 is a big difference. If you're getting that many during the peak hour, 49 is way too low for an average day. There, and, and I, I guess, yeah, I, to reinforce what Joyce is saying, I'd like to, to see what's its basis for that, for the numbers here. Uh, and if it's other facilities in the state, well, you you gotta you gotta look at the size of them facilities and their parking. Uh, I I don't know how we come up with these, how you come up with your customer base, whether based on square footage or 10% square footage of Northampton size, so you're 10% of their customers. Uh, I I don't know. That's that that's uh cruel way, a real cruel way of doing it, coming up with estimates. You know, and, and I think somewhere near you, you come up with uh, directions where people are coming from north and south. Did, was a study actually done for that? How, how do you come up with, with that direction where people were coming from? And as far as uh, how much traffic a business generates, whether it's a marijuana establishment, whether it's a restaurant, whether it's a doctor's office, <clears throat> whether it's a shopping mall, there is there is statistics, or I should say data available on how much traffic each type of facility will generate based on square footage, number of parking spots. That's something that this person should be looking at. Now, I don't know if that's yet available for a cannabis industry or not. But all these other types of businesses, it is. The Institute of Traffic Engineers, ITE has a manual that tells you how to do that. I don't know if that's where this is coming from or not, or if they have information that current. But that is a reliable source that everybody uses mm -hmm. to estimate traffic, to come up with this. That's what I like to see in here, whether he's using some kind of database from other other establishments to come up with this or I'm just sure he uh, did. He just a, a comparison years. direct comparison which uh, I, I don't know if you compare us a shopping set uh, a new store versus the shopping mall in Hadley and say you know we're smaller so we're going to get X amount uh, that's real cruel crude way to do it so Direction 
approximately 75% from the south, 25% from the north. Again, what's its basis for that? So I guess what, what I hope we can do by having this draft host community agreement that we've done some work on already, that this will help you move forward with the appropriate committees for site plan review and special permits um, be, with that, not, without it necessarily being signed. That having the proposed agreement in hand is enough for them to move forward. And we'd like to hear back from, uh, from them and, of course, with you, uh, how the parking and other things like that are resolved. Um, that's so, but to, to me, it's important that you you don't. I, I don't want you like sitting in limbo, mm -hmm. right? We got to resolve this one way or the other, right? Um, and if it, you know, if the planning board says let's do an independent parking study, mm -hmm. uh, let's get a better idea of why you why you have these particular estimates and uh, and just and find out. I mean, I understand it's kind of the, the, the we sort of have the last word. Right, but um, I'd like to make it based on something um, that's a little bit, I don't know, that I would feel a little bit more reliable on. But the way we're going to find that out is through the special permit process and the site plan review. Right, and, and you guys kind of, we had to go through you guys first before we could get through there and have it signed. Right. That's what they said in the regulations because yeah. we are all set up yeah. for the yeah. CBA. But I think the regulations don't require you to have a signed host community agreement. You can have a proposed one and take that to them to get the other part of the process going. Okay. That is my understanding of it. And I think that was true for other people who were um, uh, who were putting in facilities. Is that, am I reading that right, Brian? My, my read of the zoning bond is that it says that it, says it requires a proposed host community agreement. Yeah. And I believe that's what others have submitted. And have moved forward on. Yeah. So, so, so that, we'll be able to come back and apply for the um, ZBA like tomorrow. I think so. Yeah. Oops. Yeah, but we're probably not, we're not ready to necessarily sign this tonight. But mm -hmm. I like the progress, mm -hmm. and I, 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 you know, I want to want you to move forward and get get these things nailed down with the people who really know more about planning, site plans, mm -hmm. and so. On. Okay, so to control parking on uh, State Road, you're proposing putting up no parking signs, right? 12 way zone? Yes, sir. I think that'll be controlled by, by Mass DOT as yeah. to what can be posted there or not. He put that in there, I think. Yeah, so it's, it's, in there. it's in the he right. Said that it said they would, uh, so they would uh, yeah, request that it be done. Correct. Right. this phase two parking that's the new since the last time we met right you added that yes that's the proposal that we will move into if we need to or whatever it's not set in stone just yet it's just kind of like an idea to try to work with some of the concerns but more for I would say I guess the Zoning Board of Appeals as well The landscaping you show is that part of on this map for phase two parking is that under phase two or is that some of that for the initial uh, some of that should be over towards the left for the initial <coughs> right when you get to those two circles that's labeled like grass yeah. that would be more towards the phase two from the last time it was more over towards the left near okay. the electrician's office in the back okay the addition was the trees and like numbers I know it's hard to see but 19 through 25 like right. really small on the side but and what, what's on this side for landscaping or wood fence what is there? yeah wood, and just wood fence yeah. yeah that's existing wood fence or are you putting one in no it's existing there's no existing oh you're talking on this the, the, yeah. the left that's side where the trucks are parked that's a, I believe um, there's a fence there yeah. isn't there there's it is a cesspool yeah. on here at least yeah. That's existing wood fence. It's, a, it's yeah. like a posted bean. It's 
it's not like a stockade. Split rail fence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any idea that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it doesn't really give any screening at all. And how close is the? What's the property on that side? That's Dave Arnold. That's a residence. Yes. You guys give any thought to if people need to let's say the parking lot's full and people needed to park needed to park off site or tried to park off site has any thought been given to what might happen in terms of the, the bigger neighborhood because they can't park on five and ten have there been any discussions with other property owners about any additional parking or not at this time just trying to think about where people might go Let's assume, let's assume you guys are very successful in, in all the parking lots and the parking lots full. Right. Sort of, how, how would that, how would that overflow of people waiting to get in and how would we manage, or how would that be managed in, in the larger neighborhood? We haven't talked to anyone as of yet. I know that the last meeting we discussed like muffins, people parked across the street when they had overflow because I was thinking maybe in that direction, but. And in, in that case, that, that I guess begs the question, how would people get across five and 10 safely? Well, that's where we have in our, the proposed, the next item, I believe number eight in the host agreement where we talked about either having an off-duty Wheatley police officer or a private person for anyone crossing the street. Yeah, but there's no, I mean, I think we really can't have foot traffic between say, Muffins and this location. Well, or anywhere on State Road. I think that it, that that would be really dangerous to have regular foot traffic there. I agree. So it would have to be something other than a police officer escorting people across the street. Is that? Well, we would be monitoring the parking lot as well. I mean. No, but but if someone parks at Muffins, how do they get down there? I think we're talking about uh, like other parking solutions. What River Valley Market rents space on other places. Their employees park there. Mm -hmm. They don't walk along five and ten down to River Valley Market. Right. They have they run a van back mm -hmm. and forth for people who have to park off site, mm -hmm. mainly employees. And they have special events. They make an arrangement people can park in the Walmart parking lot and they send shuttle vans back and forth. I think that's more along the lines of like that would be a, a much more acceptable plan B than just saying, well, we'll hire an officer in case people want to cross the street. That doesn't really seem very. We can also shuttle our employees if we're able to talk to somebody locally and see if there's a place we can rent space as well, too. I'm not opposed to that either. Yeah. Um, so, so I guess the Brian, to Brian's question, you, you actually haven't gone that far no. into looking into it. Okay. No. So, <coughs> So those are yeah. I guess those are things that we really think you should look into, and that's. I know it'll take time. Yep. How many park? How many uh, employees do you anticipate here? We talked the last time. I think like six or seven. Six or seven. Okay. Yeah. And is this? The parking as shown, does it exist today? No, it's just kind of like. How far back does it go to the building? To like here. The edge of the building. Yeah. The edge of the building. Because then he has he has trucks currently like facing like the trees would be. Mm -hmm. So space twelve is the end of the parking today. Let me just see. Twelve is the end. Recently. Yeah, it's right around there to the edge of where we are currently. Okay. Yeah, okay. like eleven twelve. And where's your handicap going to be in space one in the beginning? Where is yeah, I think it's noted as well in the documentation. Yeah. Okay. Space one and then phase two. If, if 
you're proposing all this parking here, where, where is your where is your septic field for this? The septic field? Yeah. I, I have no idea, to be honest it's with you. It's right where the new parking is. I think it's under proposed. phase two. Under phase yeah. two? Yeah. That's where the leaks yeah. field is, yeah. There you go. <clears throat> so you, you have... Uh... Questions for now, or should we let this move on to the planning board and the ZBA? Does, uh, just one thing on, on State Road does there need to be a approval from the state for access control or changes of access? Or? Not that I'm aware of. I think you asked that the last time. Yeah. I don't think so. Okay. Do because you know? now it's all now it's kind of all open, right? What do you mean? It's all open. In front of the building, anybody can pull in or out, right? Parking. Well, right now they yeah. use the front part as parking, but it's yeah. not safe to do that, to just back up on there. So the architect created like landscaping in the front and diverted the parking towards the side because you're going to have a lot of people going to the side because that's where we'll need to do the ramp. Okay. So it has to be on that. You don't want people just slamming in there at okay. the same time because, you know, people come off the road and they could go. Right, like, you know, pretty quick into someone or whatever in the front of the building. Okay. Did you to ask if anybody else Yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay, so your, your questions are taken yeah, for the moment. Much, yeah. Okay, is there anybody else here who would like to um, add? I guess there's so just say who you are. I'm Dave, I'm Dave Korpieski. Um, my roots go back to um, 70 years ago. My, uh, down my third generation that property. My brother lives there. My wife and I bought the property across the street in uh, 84, uh, 79 and we built our shop in 84 and we've been operating ever since then. Um, I have a, new, a unique perspective in that uh, we used to run a roadside stand, it was Valley Produce, and um, my grandparents ran it, my parents ran it, and- um, Is that in the same area here? Uh, it's- uh, Right next door to where this facility north. so I have a, a my perspective is this um, back before 62 before uh, Route 91 opened up um, it was the same traffic pattern Thursday Friday night it was jam-packed with tra traffic going north uh, Sunday Monday it was jam-packed traffic going south there were times when traffic would just stop um, and most of the traffic was you know, from New Jersey, uh, New York, or Connecticut. If you go up on 91 and you sit there and you watch traffic and number plates, you see the same amount. I would say that at least 60 to 70 percent of the vehicles on any given weekend are from out of state. As an electrician and working, you know, uh, closely with Zimmy and that sort of thing in that area with uh, Netta. Um, you're talk, talking to people and so on and so forth, talking to police officers and whatever, and they're telling me that over 50% of the customers are from out of state. Having said that, uh, as far as NEDA versus Waitley Route 5 and 10, Route 5 and 10 is a far better <coughs> location for this type of activity. When you say NEDA, what do you... NEDA is the, uh, the uh, marijuana dispensary in Northampton. Okay. okay. Um, but there are problems, and the problem is the fact that um, Netta has, is uh, in, uh, encompassed by four roads. They have two police officers at all times, two uh, you know uh, shifts a, a day. 
They even have a police officer at night in a cruiser to protect the safe. Uh, somehow all of this seems really out of character when it comes to um, Waitley in a schoolhouse, the way we grew up. The schoolhouse set the tone for the community. Um, you know, the, the community is muffins. It's, um, you know, uh, Jim and Jan down the street with, as you mentioned, great vegetables. Uh, there are actually three electricians that live in that area. They work, and we work fine together, no problem. But this is a, certainly a departure from that type of activity. Now you have needs and wants. You need electricity, you need milk, you need uh, food, but this is a want item. Now the want item has more driving force than uh, what you need. Okay, can we do it out the want? Yes, we could. If you really want this product, you go to Greenfield, you go to Northampton. The, as far as traffic goes, okay, if you want to see traffic, go to Damon Road at four o'clock in the afternoon. 8 o'clock in the morning, you cannot access, or you can't, you're stuck. Go to Route 9 in um, Hadley, same deal. Stores close, they open up, they close. If you come from Northampton, you get off, you cannot get back and go to Northampton. It is not possible. You have to go all the way into Amherst, turn around and come back. And you would think that a traffic pattern with a lot of cars would be great for business, but it's not. So you have a situation where I, I truly believe, and seeing a stand and seeing all the other activity I've seen over the course of my 70 years, I can see Netta being trumped by a organization in Waitley. So you're gonna have that 60 to 7% of non-residents streaming into Waitley. To go where? To park where? How are they gonna accommodate them? No, no and you're, my, you're, you're making our case. And my question to that is, why do we have to give up as Whitley residents, back three generations? Why do we have to give up our solitude, our property rights, right. for non-residents? I assure you, working at the stand, I figured out right away, when, if you wanted to see how your, your situation was going to go, forgive me for getting upset, you look at the number plate. If they are from New Hampshire, they are from Vermont, they are the salt of the earth. They were great folks. Connecticut, not so much. And then I'll go down from there. I won't go any more on that. But that was always what, it's always how it worked out. Okay? I don't want to have to cater to a non resident. Now, if Waitley wants, like I said, Waitley is a better opportunity for this type of uh, product and uh, business if you want it. I'm pro business. I think business is great. But the problem is, I don't want business to go on the backs of people in the community. It's not up to them to take the burden because somebody wants to make a profit. So take it someplace else. But if Waitley really wants this, there's plenty of open fields in Route 5 and 10. Go where there's a lot more land. Okay, go by castaways. They dovetail nicely together. Uh, they have plenty of room. We call it the entertainment district, however you want to put it. And I'm not being, I'm, I'm being honest, I'm, I'm being a bit a little sarcastic, but I apologize for that. But you need an, a, if that's what you want, you need a place that will have the parking, put it away for everybody where it doesn't bother anybody, uh, and do it there. There's, we don't want it. it it's just going to be such a burden. There's the, no parking signs, forget it. Okay. There's parking signs and they still park along no, the road. That. So, I mean, oh, when they, you're, 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 you're making our points. When, when, we, when the bookstore would have a, a book sale. Now, book sales aren't in the, you know, they're not a big draw, they're not marijuana. In front of our barn, we try to get his people parked in front of the barn. Big no parking sign anytime. You know, signage is useless. It really is. And with dealing with people, I'm sorry to say this, they're, they're purchasing a drug. Call it what you wish. Federally, it's illegal, okay? If it's legal in the state, that's great. But with the 48% of us that didn't want it, we don't want to get trampled on. I'll rest my case. Thank you for giving me no. here. Oh, no, no, thank you for showing up. And, uh, and uh, in, in a way, I feel helping us make our case because we're worried about many of the same things that you are. And I think that's why an independent um, traffic study would be really, really valuable well, here. Because, because, you know, so, Easy on, easy off. I mean, you know, 
Yeah. So that's 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 something that that I think could be. Um, I hear you. I guess is what I'm saying. Thank you very much. Yeah. That question that I guess kind of see it's your knowledge of, of the the area. Uh, basically, your knowledge of the area. Muffins is down the road from you. It's open from what six in the morning to eight at night, whatever. Something like that. Are, are they full of capacity? Is there a, a lot of business going there? Because I guess I'm getting at if if that's 70, 80 percent full capacity, and, and people are looking for a place to, else to park, is it possible to park there? Is there going to be room there? What, what do you view? As I can't muffins? speak for muffins. Okay, I can't speak for them at all. But what I can speak to is the fact there's no sidewalks, and if people are walking down the road in January, okay? Yeah, uh, no, they, they, that we, we can't tolerate foot traffic. You will have? Or any plan that would, we think, reasonably lead to foot traffic. So those things absolutely have to be, and I think, I think um, our, our, um, our I, think, I think you hear us. I don't. I, I will get an independent study. That's yeah, not a problem. That's, uh, or it, it may be the planning board would be better to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I suspect uh, Rick has something to say. Perhaps a little bit. How no. <laughs> um, many sheets you got there? <laughs> no, and and, and no we, I mean we 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 heard you last time too. I'm so sure. so uh, so. Uh, I'll be. I'll try to be brief. As far as muffins is concerned. They usually have Verizon trucks and a few other trucks that park in there first thing in the morning, but the rest of the day it's empty. You know, there's not a, nearly the parking that's required there, but they have a little burst first thing in the morning, yeah. and then it's open for the rest of the day. And so if there were any overflow parking that landed there, they would have ample space to put themselves. The other concern that I have is, is as it gets darker, particularly in the winter, um, you have on, you have a bad corner with you know light and oncoming traffic. They you know, anybody coming through if it happens to be a rainy night and somebody's coming through during their business hours, um, it becomes a huge issue with you know can you see somebody who's walking on the side of the road in the first place? So does it become incumbent to put in lighting? Does, how much does that lighting impair on the adjoining residential property and the character of the neighborhood? I mean we have a number of, we have more residential homes there than we have commercial businesses. The, the, the concern I have as far as this print is concerned is you don't have um, distances. Was this done by a... It uh, was just done today as it, it was just something, if we want to move forward with that, we have to go through the Zoning Board of Appeals and show that. Right. That was just um, a way to show like another alternative tonight for tonight's oh, purpose. Sure, no, I can appreciate that, but I would like to know in the future the, how if you had a surveyor come through and give you those, Absolutely. these distances. And because I don't see any distances written on here, and I don't see a survey stamp anywhere on here, so I'm trying to understand it's, it's what you're distant. Okay, so my concern with this plan, the secondary parking area, is I'm 35, probably 35 feet in the corner of that bedroom to this property line, to the or to this proposed site, and I want to know exactly what your plan is, because if it's truly offset by what 11 and a half or you know. But maybe you know, say eight degrees or something. I would like to know specifically where that line, where your plan line would be, because that really board. matters to the mm -hmm. to the value of the property and the usability. Because mm -hmm. and then your your hours, the lighting associated with that, the traffic noise, the, the, the you know trees aren't going to cover that. I'm sorry, because if it's too close, there's no place to put snow. The trees are going to get ruined. They're not going to be a sufficient shield. Um, and so it's, it, for us, it's extraordinarily important to know that location, that you put a parking lot right there, you're gonna be so close to that property that it's gonna devalue that property ex exclusively. Right now, you have a nice a grass lot and it provides a, a, a pleasing view of the, of the property and has for the last 80 years. And now you're going to change that so drastically that it's gonna affect us disproportionately in an extraordinary way and I'm very concerned about that. You also have two curb cuts, which I'm concerned about, and especially this one very close to our driveway, 
and how are you going to mark, how are you going to manage the fact that people are going to think they could drive down my driveway for parking in the back because that is a problem. Right. No, we been. talked about that last time, and we'll address that for the zoning board. But how will that well be too. addressed effectively so it doesn't incumbent me as a as best as we can as business owners? I mean, that's all I can say. If people were to pull in there, we're going to be diverting them away. I mean, we'll do the best that we can. So how do you manage the traffic, the human traffic and the vehicle traffic with your hours of operation with the proximity of a residential home and bedrooms on a Sunday morning, on a Saturday night? Trying to do the best that we can. The given best that you can doesn't statistics. solve residential neighbors' property uh, or problems. You create a problem by being there and your, your answer by saying the best we can doesn't solve that problem effectively. That doesn't allow me an, an expected outcome. The best we can has vague limits by far, and I want I want specifics personally. The as civil a rebutter, engineer and the architect can better speak to. I'd like to know things. where he is expecting my house, what the distance is between the property lines and mm -hmm. this angle, and you know I would need to know a whole lot more before. I felt anywhere close to comfortable with this possibility. Well, we're not getting approved. We're going to move to the Zoning Board of Appeals, and you can come to that meeting, and all my team will be there. Okay. Can I make just one quick comment? Sure. Uh, <clears throat> now that you know, based in Northampton has Northampton has 65 police officers. They have, uh, you know, an ambulance service. They have two, uh, you know, fire stations. They even have a hospital, and they have all the associated services to go along with everything in Northampton. Um, you take if you took that model and move it to Waitley, how would Waitley deal with that? Well, we have two full-time police officers, and you have three fire stations. I'm joking. Okay, now now I'm being, but you know how would Waitley deal with that? There has to be support services. Okay. In, in my, that's my question, I guess. Are they prepared to do that? Oh, I think the police officers you're so, talking about are hired by them as police details. Right. So that right. does yeah. not come out of our full-time police. But yes, our police chief is talking with us about uh, the, uh, the way his job is changing with uh, the new industries moving in um, or attempting to move in at this point. But no, no, you're right. You're right. It does, it does affect our police department. Um, and one of the points about the host community agreement is to get some compensation uh, to the town for the cost that we will incur because of the presence of these new industries. Um, Correct. And uh, police and emergency services included in there. So I, I, that's uh, set by the state at uh, 3%. Uh, and we actually, in this uh, proposed agreement, have asked for, uh, for additional money for uh, Education Correct. and for uh, local area nonprofits, like and we, we, who can also use it for education, like the historical society or any Waitley based nonprofit, um, would be uh, could benefit from this because and they can do they can do their own tailored education um, on this. Uh, what <laughs> I don't know if you got to see on TV the the, the pre maybe this is saying too much, but the, the, the folks who were going to open up in the Sugarloaf shops up at uh, uh, near where 5 and 10 meets 116, where parking is not a problem. <coughs> they, uh, they, they came in and tried to assure us that we're going to do all kinds of education. We're going to, you know, we're going to educate people. And, and basically, he was saying, we'll tell people all about our products. That's what they thought education was. And they were trying to say, we, we don't need to pay this other thing. We'll do all this education. And we, as a board, uh, the three of us, said, thanks, but no thanks. <laughs> we don't count you advertising your products to your customers as education. Uh, we want something in our schools. We want something, you know, in, starting in elementary school and in the high schools. We want, we, we really, we really want to take this money and provide real education because that's what our kids need. That's what everybody, everybody needs to understand. Uh, what exactly is going on with this, as you call it, uh, a drug, and I would agree with you, it is a drug, um, that 
we need education. So that's that's part of it. Um, the, and on top of that, there's the three percent of revenues that would come back to the town so that we can afford expansion of the police department if that's necessary. Um, and so when they call it a direct or indirect cost, I don't remember the, the budgetary term for it. So, so that is it. That so, to, just to answer your question, it may not be. Um, uh, we may not be able to predict in advance that it's going to be adequate, but it is certainly a step toward having uh, whatever additional costs there are going to be to the town uh, paid for by the, these new businesses. I don't know if that is a satisfactory explanation, but but that's at least part of what this host agreement is about. I understand that. I think it's good for the town. But my uh, comment is, it's better someplace else. I mean, this is shoehorning that thing right in there, jamming it as tight as you can. My other question is, seeing people don't respect signage. I mean, <laughs> yeah. signage are useless. Ask Muffins, we put uh, signs up and the people park right and nobody cares. So signage is useless. You can put all kinds of signs on the road you want, and they're just gonna park there. If it's an out-of-state or they're gonna pay a $30 park you know, ticket, they'll do it. If that's not a, that's an issue for them. My question to you, though, who will enforce that? Is that up to the state police to enforce parking, or no parking, or is it up to the town police? I would probably ask our, our uh, chief of police what that is. I, I don't know off the top of my head, but I don't see any reason why our local police could not enforce local parking. Are, can they do that on on five and ten to state highway? I think question. they can have speeders on five and ten, so I don't. See why they can. But that's really a, a question for the police, and the next time I see them, I will ask them. They're in here pretty frequently. I, I do have an answer to that. I'm sorry. Oh, oh I do sure. have an answer. I did look into that. I did contact the state police, and the state police says that they will put up signage, but they will not enforce. So it becomes incumbent on the town mm -hmm. to do enforcement to do exclusively. We, we feel this will devalue our property. Um, if ever we were to sell one day, mm -hmm. um, who wants to buy across from a pot shop? So we really do not want this here. We don't want to cram down our throats. We want to live in peace. The, uh, just a comment before you throw me out of here. Um, the vote was not unanimous in the state. It was, yes. and it was not unanimous. So the people who voted against it, okay. Now, if I would, as if we were to sell, for instance, or would we want to give it to our grandkids? Hey, Davey, you want a place down there? Not across the street from that place, Grandpa. You know, and this is you know an honest response. But that 48 percent who voted against it wouldn't have any interest in buying there. You've cut your market base in half. Okay, they, they did this up in the Berkshires. Factories closed, um, the, um, there was no jobs. People from the city moved up and bought it all at 10 cents on a dollar. Well, well acknowledged with that. He saw it happen. I was, you know, I knew people who were involved in that. And that's how they did it. But I don't want to see that happen in Waitley. You know, we have a lot of history here. I want to preserve it. We, you know, we keep our property really nice. There's, there's not a log or a stick out of place. We're proud of it. We want to see it. If I had a nickel for every um, empty uh, you know, a beer bottle or, sh or a shot container or a penny for every cigarette, I'd be a millionaire. Because so it, it, just throw oh, their no, everything goes out the window. I, I, I hear you. And this will certainly aggravate that. It will certainly, it will, it will be our own cleanup company. Thank you. Lisa, you've been quiet, but... No, I have, I'm not going well. I guess I'd, I'd like to see more on, uh, on the map. And I know, Brian, if we, if we, if we got anything I more think, detail yeah. of this, but a, a map of the area, this is a map of what's being proposed. It has nothing, doesn't show anything of the neighborhood. Uh, on either side of the road, uh, dimensions, location of adjacent properties, houses, and all he that. He has all that included for the Zoning Board of Appeals. Okay, you have all that, that on another map. Yes, so sir. I'll, okay, yep. I didn't know that, okay. Yep. So are we ready to let this go to the next board? Okay. 
I think that's probably. So here. we don't need to set a date or anything. Until we don't. Until no, we don't need to, to set a date. They'll. Uh, I'm okay. sure they'll have more than one meeting okay. regarding this. Uh, okay. Okay. You sir, do you have anything to add? Yes. Uh, my name is Joe Widner. I, I live right on the border of Waitley and Hatfield. I live right next to One State Road. So, uh, okay. I can see I have the zoning map. I already started the uh, okay. assessor's So, map. you know, they have the landscape business right next to me, and that people constantly are pulling into that parking lot to turn around. You know, so it's a, it's a big concern. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, with, with more cars there, you know they're going to be turning in and out and that's just creating just another dangerous situation truthfully yeah and good so yeah I, so I feel like i feel like you are all helping make the case to you about what kind of things and and that we really want specifics mm -hmm. on how would this situation be handled how would that situation be Yes, if I had known, I would have brought the yeah. engineer. Oh no, no, no fact, I apologize. Yeah. Well, I know that it's, it's a process. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a, a process, and probably much of that is also appropriate for the ZBA and Correct. The planning board. And uh, I'll have to make sure that I keep my eye on their calendar as well. And yes, I have a question for you. Sure. Is the electrician going to be moving out of there? Yes, eventually. Yes, Steve. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So those parking spots would be available to yes. you at that point. He has plans to build another facility somewhere. I just don't know where. Somewhere in Waitley, I assume. He said he had land somewhere else. I don't okay. know. What is your plan with the rest of the building? Um, I'd like to keep the rest of the building. If we, if so, like move it into maybe some offices in the back area or something, would create a little have, bit more space. Would you ever have an interest in growing there? Potentially, but then um, I guess it would add to more employees, more things. So maybe we'll stay the growing over in Deerfield, next to the um, Candle Museum. Alrighty, so I guess this part. All is, set. Is all set. Okay. okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Tonight. So the next part of the meeting. Um, we will be uh, going into executive session um, to conduct a contract negotiation with non union personnel. Um, the board will be returning to open session because the result of the negotiation is expected to be um, that we may enter into a three-year employment agreement with the town administrator to start this <coughs> So we will come back into session for that vote, but there's no other items other than the vote on the three-year employment contract for the town administrator after we come out of executive session. So I don't know how that, how that affects. If you want to hang around for the vote, um, you'd have to hang out in another room. Um, Thank you so much. Oh, you're Thank welcome. you very much. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. We really appreciate that. And Thank you very much. Do you need a roll call vote? Um, yeah, yeah, so we need a roll call vote for that. So um, did I say the words close enough? I think so. Okay. Uh, so, uh, vote to go into executive session. Um, Fred? Yes. Uh, myself? Yes. So, we are now to executive session. One last item uh, on our agenda, uh, and that is uh, the vote to, I think get the right words here. here. Uh, vote to, there we go. Um, uh, vote to enter into a three-year employment agreement with the town administrator, but beginning on July 1st, 2019. Uh, uh, I'll make the motion that we uh, enter this three-year employment uh, agreement that we negotiated. A second. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So are there any other items not anticipated within 48 hours? Another poll hearing? I hope not. Our next meeting. Do, uh, our, our next, next meeting is May seventh. So after that, do we need to we need to decide other meetings? Yeah, let's just talk about that very briefly. Yeah. Okay. Based, based on the doodle poll that Amy had sent out, um, the only time we can get um, two board members together would be the our regular meeting day, the 29th. Yeah. That's 
yourself and Fred. May 29th. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, I talked to Jonathan about that today, and he seemed okay with that. Okay. So it, my uh, recommendation would be to keep that. Yeah, keep that and keep it at six o'clock, which is our usual time for the just for, for people's sanity, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. Although I was like earlier meetings, but that's okay. Yeah, at that time of year, I can actually do earlier meetings. I don't have a, a problem with that. Um, so if we really wanted to move it earlier for like the summer season, I would be um, I would be amenable to that. And, but maybe that's something that we should have kind of um, all three of us here to yeah. um, to to talk about that. We will have all three of us on the seventh. It's Jonathan on set. So maybe let's put that on the agenda for the seventh yeah. to uh, uh, to talk about if you want to make uh, summer meetings a little bit earlier. If that works for other people's schedules. So I entertain a motion to adjourn. And well, will, you, will we all be there for the annual meeting? The annual town meeting? Yes. I feel, yeah, I'm going to be there. Jonathan will be there as well. Yeah. Uh, I haven't heard otherwise, so okay. I yeah. assume so. And again, that's. Yeah. April 30th. Yeah. So sometimes we have a, a little special time meeting before that to take care of one thing or another, but then I've not, not heard of anything, so not this time. No. Okay. April 30th. April 30th. April 30th. Be there, be square. Okay. Town Hall. Town Hall, 7 p.m. It's where the cool kids are hanging out on Tuesday nights in April. Okay. Okay. So we're done. Second. And done. Uh, all right.